Hi, and welcome to Go Fort Smith. I'm your host, Taylor Rogers. There's no denying that Fort Smith is a city on the move. From a thriving arts and culture district to an eclectic mix of shops and restaurants, Fort Smith offers something fun and exciting for everyone. On today's show, we'll take you on a tour of one of Fort Smith's newest restaurants, Uncork. We'll visit with Woodco, a unique furniture company with an amazing history. Next, we'll stop into Bookish, the only independently owned bookstore in Fort Smith, and then we'll meet Eugene at Champion Cycling and get a behind the scenes look at their new facility. So sit back, relax, and let's go Fort Smith. Taylor Rogers at Uncorked in Fort Smith, and trust me when I tell you, this place is not just another bar. From the stunning wood decor to the many unique features you see when you walk in, this place has it all. They provide an amazing atmosphere with world-class wines, handcrafted cocktails, craft beer, and some amazing local food. Let's check it out. I'm here with General Manager Matt Walters. Matt, good to see you again. And Matt, the first obvious sign that this place is different, I would have to say, are the machines on the wall here. And I'd kind of just like you to tell me a little bit more about those. Sure, yeah, absolutely. Uh, these are wine enomatic dispensing systems. Basically, we have 32 different wines on tap. We have 20 reds and 12 whites. Uh, this is an evolving, rotating menu, so there's always something new and fresh on. Um, basically, everything is broken down different size pours, so you can do a taster option, you can do a half glass or a full glass. Uh, and this basically just allows the customers to be able to try different wines, and if they like, they can get a full bottle or glass with their meal or whatever they like. That's awesome, Matt. And, you know, I've, I've got to ask, where did the inspiration come from? Uh, the main inspiration was from the owner, Scott Clark. Um, he had one of these machines put in at Sodi's a few years ago, and he really liked the whole perfume counter concept, try it before you buy it. And so he said, why not take that into a restaurant bar atmosphere? So hence where we came up here at Uncourt. Man, that's honestly, that's awesome. And now I've got to see how it works. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Basically, all you do, you take your enomatic wine card, put it in the machine here. We have our glasses right here, and you just want to press what options you would like. <laughs> Voila. If you've ever considered a destination wedding, then you don't want to miss I Do. Hosted by Sierra Scott on Cox's Your View. Join Sierra as she learns from the experts what it takes to have your very own destination wedding. Set against the beautiful and historic charm of Eureka Springs, Arkansas. From incredible venues to planning and decorating to capturing the all special moments and breathtaking gowns, I Do takes you on a journey you won't want to miss. I Do. Brought to you by Mathis Outlet in Springdale. Only on Cox's Your View Channel 2076. Take the plunge and find out why craft beer isn't just for beer nerds. Join me, Brett Hightower, as I explore breweries in Northwest Arkansas and learn all about the wonderful community they've created. On this episode of Untapped Northwest Arkansas, we'll journey to Bike Rack Brewing Company, Core Brewing Company, Rendezvous Junction Brewing Company, Saddlebock Brewery, and Bentonville Brewing Company. Untapped is brought to you by McAdoodle's Fine Wine and Spirits on the Arkansas and Missouri Line North. Get Untapped on Cox's Your View Channel 2076. So Matt, let's talk about the drink selection a little bit. It's more than just wine, right? Uh, absolutely, we have our uh, nice wines and craft cocktails, but more than that, we also have a nice wide variety of beer on tap. We have 37 beers tapped right now with 
you know, different wide varieties from your American Pilsners to your Wild Sours to Barrel Aid Stouts. Um, and not only that, but out of our 37 tapped, I'd say a good 20 at all times are local beers uh, with the intentions to not only support local businesses, but you know, keep a good variety within local. Hey, gotta love keeping it local. And Definitely. aside from the craft beer, you know, I understand you have other options as well. Oh yeah, yeah. For the everyday consumer who just wants a uh, nice domestic, we have a wide variety of bottle options as well. So we keep that as well. So you've got something for everybody. Definitely. Cheers All to right. that. The bartenders at Uncorked are skilled at creating artful cocktails. From the up and smoke to the lavender lemon drop, they focus on flavor with high quality ingredients as well as the presentation of the cocktail itself. The food at Uncorked is another thing that sets them apart from other bars. Tapas is a small hearty appetizer and can be combined to make a full meal. The chefs and kitchen staff at Uncorked have perfected this cuisine and make it look beautiful, appetizing, and sophisticated. The chefs also serve specials every couple of weeks with new items as well as create custom menus for your special events. In addition to the main dining room, there are two special rooms at Uncorked, as well as an outdoor patio. The cigar room is equipped with a clean air system that eliminates the smoke from the room instantly. In addition, this room has its own enematic machine, but it's not wine in this machine, it's bourbon. This room is perfect for a guy's night out or a great place to come and watch the big game with friends. The meeting room is a private space that can be rented for special events. Typically rented for about 20 people, the meeting room is equipped with a projector and screen for business meetings, or it can be transformed into a more casual space with comfortable lounge seating, a beautiful fireplace in the background, and the perfect amount of privacy for your special event. Rain or shine, hot or cold, the covered patio is open. With the ability to heat it in the winter or cool it down in the summer, the patio at Uncorked is the perfect place to reconnect with friends, unwind after a long day, or simply sit back, relax, and enjoy the amazing food and drinks being served up daily. Well, there you have it, Uncorked. And this place is amazing. Whether you're needing a romantic date night, a girl's night out, or just a place to watch the big game with your buddies, Uncorked is the place to be. But don't just take my word for it. Come check it out for yourself. If you've ever considered a destination wedding, then you don't want to miss I Do. Hosted by Sierra Scott on Cox's Your View. Join Sierra as she learns from the experts what it takes to have your very own destination wedding. Set against the beautiful and historic charm of Eureka Springs, Arkansas. From incredible venues to planning and decorating to capturing the all special moments and breathtaking gowns, I Do takes you on a journey you won't want to miss. I Do. Brought to you by Mathis Outlet in Springdale. Only on Cox's Your View Channel 2076. Take the plunge and find out why craft beer isn't just for beer nerds. Join me, Brett Hightower, as I explore breweries in Northwest Arkansas and learn all about the wonderful community they've created. On this episode of Untapped Northwest Arkansas, we'll journey to Bike Rack Brewing Company, Core Brewing Company, Rendezvous Junction Brewing Company, Saddlebock Brewery, and Bentonville Brewing Company. Untapped is brought to you by McAdoodle's Fine Wine and Spirits on the Arkansas and Missouri Line North. Get Untapped on Cox's Your View Channel 2076. When it comes to quality, handcrafted, made in the USA furniture, no one does it better than Woodco. They've been perfecting their craft for over 42 years and we're about to sit down with the owners, Bobby and Leslie, to learn more about this second generation small business. I'm here with Woodco owners Bobby and Leslie Pierce in their beautiful furniture showroom. But Bobby, Woodco hasn't always been a furniture company, correct? No, Taylor, it hasn't. Um, my dad uh, was working for another turning company in Florida, and then in, in he, early 70s, he was transferred here to Arkansas to run a company, but that didn't work out. So in 1977, uh, my dad started Woodco Turning Company, and I was 11 years old at that time. And at that point, we were just making turnings for all the other furniture manufacturers in this area and really all over the nation. And um, we did that for years and years. We just made turnings and parts for other manufacturers. But as they went overseas, and, and that was when the big 
rush went to overseas manufacturing, we lost all that business. So we started developing our own line of furniture and we started building chairs and tables and china hutches and in our own furniture line instead of selling to other manufacturers. And that grew and grew and grew. And then in 1995, uh, we opened our Van Buren facility to the public. And we have our store here now that Leslie runs. And so we sell not only just the tables and chairs and bookcases that we build and distribute to furniture stores, um, which you can buy here wholesale, but we also carry other American-made product, couches, bedroom, a lot of Amish product, mattresses, rockers, things like that, um, with lots of choices. You can come and have it custom built the way you want it. Well, that's awesome that everything's so local and custom, and I love the history behind this place. I would like to know, though, when did, when did you take over, Bobby? Uh, like I said, I've always done this since I was 11 years old. I've always been involved in some process of the business. Pretty much in 99, I took over operations as president of the company. And it's been a lot of changes over the years, but people are now, with, with so much import furniture and quality issues, um, the business has gotten really, really good. People are really searching out quality, and that's our niche, you know, quality and custom is customer what we do. Customer service as well. I mean, mm -hmm. we have a lot of good customer service. You deal with the owners when you come to Woodco. Well, yeah, we don't like any um, unhappy customers. We have complete control over quality. We, like I said earlier, we make uh, every piece here, so uh, we like to exceed expectations with our customer base. So as I was walking through the showroom earlier, I couldn't help but notice that every piece of furniture looked and felt like it was created with a great deal of care and craftsmanship. Everything in here, you can tell a lot of thought has went into it. I just kind of want to know about that process. Well, when you visit our store, first of all, everything will be solid wood, whether it's oak, maple, cherry, we deal with walnut, hickory, lots of other species. Uh, you come in and kind of tell me what it is you're looking for. If it's a table, how many people do you want to seat? Do you want legs? Do you want a pedestal, double pedestal? And then we just go through the process. I show you all the different styles and colors that we have. Uh, many people will bring a cabinet door or um, something in a shelf in, and then we can go through all of our different colors and they can choose something that will coordinate with their home. We do lots of trends, the two tones. Um, um, if you want a blue chair, we can get you a blue chair. So just about whatever you want, quality but customized. And sometimes it takes two or three trips for you to come in, um, but we will see your vision and help create that piece of furniture for you. Yeah, it's, it's a process, but as I said earlier, we make everything here, so we're up to date on the styles. No matter what they want, you know, we, we can do that in a hurry. You don't have to wait for you know, the imports to come in with that style. We, we can produce just about whatever you want. And we've had people bring us pictures of pieces of furniture they want built, and we build it to those designs as well. Well, it's very unique to, you know, be that customizable. You have to have some pretty talented people that work for you to be able to put that furniture together. Absolutely, yeah, that's a big deal. We've had, uh, we have a great crew. We have two plants. We have about 30 people that work for us. And we, you know, we've had guys that have been with us for over 30 years. Mm -hmm. uh, we make our own tooling, you know, to, to make our uh, products. Um, we have people that work in our cabinet department in Fort Smith and people that work in the turning plant. Uh, the table builders here, um, you know, they, they sign the bottom of that table. We know who built that table and they do. They take a lot of pride in it. You know, um, they, you know it's right here in their community. So they do, um, they do take a lot of pride in their workmanship. Right. We have great people that work for us. And a great finishing line. We have a lot of women who are very detail oriented and mm -hmm. spend a lot of time just really making it very meticulous. Yeah, all our, all our finishes is hand wiped. It's done the old fashioned way. It's not a rushed manufacturing process. It's all about quality and, and they do, they do a great job and they, they're, they're very concerned about quality for sure. So you guys have been in business for over 42 years, but you're still a small business. So I'd imagine that being involved in the community is very important to you. Yes, very important to us. Um, we've employed people in this community for over 40 years, did you say? Um, she was born here in Fort Smith. I've lived here for over 40 years, so the community means everything to us. Um, we try to shop local with everything we buy. Um, I bought my bike at Champion Cycling from Eugene. Uh, we bank locally, uh, buy our insurance from uh, Brown Hill or Clark, um, and I think it's very important if you, can, if you can shop local and support local businesses, and you, you get a good value that way. It's very important to us. And we really promote that, shop local. And a lot of people who do live in this area don't realize you can come directly to our store here 
um, at our factory where you can buy the furniture right off the floor or have it custom built. But we also have built a lot of furniture for companies in this area. Um, Uncorked, which was mentioned earlier, uh, we built all of their interior furniture, their tables and chairs and bar stools, and even built their nice long bar. Uh, Taliano's in Calico County are restaurants that we put furniture in. Um, Champion Cycling, we've even built the bar stools that you sit at the service counter. Um, those are Woodco bar stools. Um, Dee's Restaurant in Van Buren just recently remodeled, um, and we built all their tables and chairs. I'm a firm believer in the saying that there's no substitute for quality. And as we've seen today, from the furniture, to the craftsmen, to the owners, there's no shortage of quality here at Woodco. Take the plunge and find out why craft beer isn't just for beer nerds. Join me, Brett Hightower, as I explore breweries in Northwest Arkansas and learn all about the wonderful community they've created. On this episode of Untapped Northwest Arkansas, we'll journey to Bike Rack Brewing Company, Core Brewing Company, Rendezvous Junction Brewing Company, Saddlebog Brewery, and Bentonville Brewing Company. Untapped is brought to you by McAdoodle's Fine Wine and Spirits on the Arkansas and Missouri Line North. Get Untapped on Cox's Your View Channel 2076. Welcome back to Go Fort Smith. I'm your host, Taylor Rogers. We're now in downtown Fort Smith, getting ready to visit with Jennifer and Sarah, the owners of the only independent bookstore in Fort Smith, Bookish. These ladies have an incredible story to tell, and I honestly can't wait for you to meet them. I'm here with Sarah and Jennifer, the owners of Bookish. And ladies, the first question I have for you, and sorry for the terrible pun, but I have to ask, what's the story behind Bookish, and how did this amazing little bookstore come to be? Well, Taylor, a couple of years ago, after seeing some articles about the resurgence in bookstores opening across the country, um, I just found that the idea wouldn't leave me. It was something that was really interesting to me, and um, I was at a point in my career where a, a change was maybe on the horizon. So I dug in and, and did some research, kind of kept it to myself for a year. Um, and then I shared it with Sarah, who was a colleague of mine at Alma High School, and told her what I was thinking, and she didn't think I was crazy. Mm -hmm. um, so from that point... Yeah, I was really impressed by all the research she'd done. She'd worked really hard to have data, you know, from market research around, I guess, like a 200-mile radius yeah. uh, from Fort Smith. Um, but then, you know, the fact that she wanted to be located downtown was kind of appealing to me. I loved what was going on in Fort Smith, down, mm -hmm. especially in the downtown community. Um, so I asked her if I could uh, jump on board. So your store is nestled in downtown Fort Smith. What was it about downtown that led you to set up shop here? We sort of feel like the downtown area is the heart of any community mm -hmm. and things, especially the art explosion with the unexpected. Um, we have several different art galleries that are downtown Fort Smith. We have the farmer's market that is just exploding. Um, we knew that this is where we needed to be if we wanted to reach a literary community and sure. sort of create a literary culture. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of nonprofits that we work with, so Absolutely. the Literacy Council, mm -hmm. Um, Hope Campus, things like that. So yeah. that's one reason we wanted to be here. So one of my favorite things about Bookish is when I walk in, it's very warm and inviting. I know it had to take a process to get it exactly how you want it. So, I mean, what was it like when you first came in here? Nothing had been here for years. years. So when we walked in, all of the walls were as red as the dark red spots. Painted red. Painted yeah. red with like Mask of the Red Death in here. And <laughs> the floor was gypsum concrete that was chipping and uneven. And the ceiling was exposed. Um, it, was, it was kind of a wreck. You had to have a vision. We had to have mm -hmm. a vision. And um, thankfully, our property owner also was willing to, mm -hmm. you know, help us with that vision some. Um, so then we started with uh, deciding on flooring and flooring, you know. yes. And then this summer, yeah. Sarah and I had to finish out the school year mm -hmm. because we were teachers. So as soon as school was out, we just went into full renovation yeah. mode. Like Joanna Gaines had nothing yeah. on us. So at that point, the property owner had put up a new ceiling, yes. added the floors, added a wall in the back so we'd have a place for our mural, you know, mm -hmm. things like that. Um, and so, yeah, but then we went into like finding bookshelves and yes. looking for fixtures and, and places to display books mm -hmm. and painting, mm -hmm. you know, every, oh gosh, every yes, inch painting. of this we painted and all of our 
furnishings and fixtures with the exception of the settees that we're sitting on right now and our wrap desk that we have locally made. Everything else was repurposed. Mm -hmm. It had a life prior to its life here at Bookish. And we were pretty proud of that. That helped mm -hmm. us come in, yeah. number one, way under budget, but two, we were just really being responsible mm -hmm. with using resources and things like that. Yep. So we were happy about that. It's hard work though. It was hard work. <laughs> I, I'm sure it was, but I'm sure it's so much more fulfilling to know that, I mean, you all had such a big hand in this and transforming it into what it is today. So one last question for you. What should people expect to experience when they come to Bookish? Well, we hope that they can expect really personalized service. We love to talk to our customers about what they're reading when they come in. Um, we like to be able to, to recommend new titles, new authors, maybe even something outside of your typical genre that you're comfortable in. Um, and certainly being able to talk to our readers about what they're reading is helpful to us as we mm -hmm. curate our selection and really tailor what we keep in the shop to what our reading community mm -hmm. wants. Um, so sure, yeah, you can you can go on Amazon and you can order that book and it can be on your doorstep in two days. Or you can come into the store and you can talk to us about books mm -hmm. and we can make that a community building experience. Yeah, that's one way to build a literary community and it's also sort of how a bookstore is a reflection of, sure. of a community. Um, but we also have events. Um, we had a local author um, last Saturday, his mm -hmm. name was James Kirkendall and he wrote a book called Abandoned Arkansas or he co-wrote that book. Um, we had a lot of people interested in it before the event even happened and it was yes. a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, we have story time every Wednesday at 1030 and every Saturday at 11 o'clock. Um, our children's story time is led by Linda who is Jennifer's mom and we have um, all kinds of other events going on. We partner with UFOs, we partner with people from all over the community mm -hmm. um, and you can find those on Facebook follow us on Facebook, you can follow us on Instagram, yeah. and then we have a calendar of events on our website as well, bookishfs.com. It's so inspiring to meet with local business owners like Jennifer and Sarah, who have turned their passion into an amazing business that helps make Fort Smith the incredibly unique city that it is. Be sure to stop in and say hi, pick up a book or two, if you've ever considered a destination wedding, then you don't want to miss I Do, hosted by Sierra Scott on Cox's Year View. Join Sierra as she learns from the experts what it takes to have your very own destination wedding, set against the beautiful and historic charm of Eureka Springs, Arkansas. From incredible venues to planning and decorating to capturing the all special moments and breathtaking gowns, I Do takes you on a journey you won't want to miss. I Do, brought to you by Mathis Outlet in Springdale, only on Cox's Year View Channel 2076. Take the plunge and find out why craft beer isn't just for beer nerds. Join me, Brett Hightower, as I explore breweries in Northwest Arkansas and learn all about the wonderful community they've created. On this episode of Untapped Northwest Arkansas, we'll journey to Bike Rack Brewing Company, Core Brewing Company, Rendezvous Junction Brewing Company, Saddlebock Brewery, and Bentonville Brewing Company. Untapped is brought to you by McAdoodle's Fine Wine and Spirits on the Arkansas and Missouri Line North. Get Untapped on Cox's Your View Channel 2076. We're now at Champion Cycling, the premier destination for everything biking in Fort Smith. Today we're going to take you on a tour of their amazing new facility as well as meet with the owner, Eugene Kirsch. He's going to tell us more about the growing biking community here in Fort Smith, so let's go check it out. Hey Eugene, it's good to see you again. Thanks for having us in your shop place looks amazing. It's obvious that you have a passion for what you do. Um, so tell me how you got into biking. Yeah, I appreciate you guys coming. I really got into biking like in 85. I watched the um, Tour de France on TV and like, ooh, I was like, that's pretty cool. I saw Greg LeMond competing with uh, Bernard Hino you know, and these other guys and I was like, ooh, I think I could do that. You know, a little kid, 13 years old, like, I will get a, I'll go get a road bike and I'll start this. So I went to Montgomery Ward and purchased a damn steel frame road bike. I thought it was all all shebangs and got out there and started competing with the guys that are, you know, racing and stuff and I'm actually competing and winning on this steel frame and then I'm like, okay, I might start getting into other things. So one thing led to another and just that became my, my life, my passion as a as a kid and it just grew with me into my teens and twenties and thirties and still now in my forties and stuff. So just part of our life, part of my life, my kids life. So pretty cool. That is awesome. It's really unique to find something at that early of an age and to stick with it, you know, basically through your entire life up until right. now. And 
So I know Champion Cycling's been around since the early 90s, but you purchased it in February of 2013. So tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, well, um, buddy of mine started in the early 90s, Johnny Jones, and since then uh, it's sold a few times and I purchased it, like say in February 2013 from another gentleman and being involved in the business, I think it's really helped just being here every day and, and seeing it grow. It's really grown tremendously just since we bought it. Uh, but cycling in general, just even just watching it grow since the 80s around here is like, just like mind blowing. You know, it's like from going back in the day to, of people just like coming by and giving you crap on the road to be out there riding. And now you go down the road, people offer you something to drink and stuff. It's pretty, pretty amazing how it's just come full circle. So talk to me about the growing biking community here in Fort Smith and how you've seen that kind of develop over the years. Yeah, cycling has really just grown tremendously, just road and mountain bike, uh, just in the area, Northwest Arkansas especially. I mean, we've got, we're sort of sitting in a melting pot with the Northwest Arkansas, Washita is just south of us and the magazine and stuff. We just have everything so nice right around us. You can ride everything from the flats to the hills and on road, off road. But now these multi-use trails and stuff that are coming around and you're seeing more and more families out and about riding and and more more adults getting involved so that's those adults are getting their kids involved and it's just really nice to see that mm -hmm. sort of progress and, and be people being out and about and enjoying enjoying life and getting some vitamin D and having fun. Well, and, and I'm sure along with that, seeing you know all these people uh, trying out mountain biking and road biking, safety obviously becomes a big concern. Um, that should be a top priority, and yeah. I mean, I'm sure you want to speak on that some yes. as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big advocate for helmets and stuff. Just, I've had too many head injuries. Even with, head, with helmets and everything, you can still have some, but without, you may not be here. So, I've, I mean, I push my kids, even just being out and about, uh, I really am, am pretty uh, ambassador specific on wanting the people to have helmets and stuff on their heads. Uh, being at the pump track and stuff downtown a lot with the kids and stuff, we see a lot of parents and kids out there with that. I just sort of like cringe at the fact of seeing that. And at the same time, we've given back a lot of helmets to the community, just give outs and giveaways and stuff that we've done with, with certain just uh, charities and stuff as well. So I like doing that, but at the same time, I like seeing them on their heads. So I've got to ask, what is your favorite part about running this business? And I've got to say the customers, you know, just seeing people come in and seeing their, like going from a beginner even to like uh, someone that's gotten involved and gotten so like fit and stuff through it and just seeing their happiness and their just stamina and stuff grow as well. So one last question for you guys. What can people expect to experience when they come to Champion Cycling? Our service, knowledge and passion is really what helps us to sort of transpond to the customer what we have for them. Uh, we, I mean, everything from newbies to people that have been racing for years just to help them get over a little hump or, or just to get their fitness to a different level. Um, it's just something that, you know, I've got a big passion for road and Mark with mountain bike. I mean, we, we both do both, uh, sort of integrate them together just so sort of they, they sort of intertwine with each other to help your stamina and, and performance as well. Well, and to that effect, I wanted to speak on your background, Mark. You know, you have road experience, you have mountain biking experience. It seems like the two mesh really well, so I'd say that probably sets you apart from others. Yeah, um, you know, I started racing BMX when I was a kid, um, young age of eight, uh, transitions in, into mountain bikes in the late 80s, uh, started racing mid-90s, um, spent a lot of time on the trail, a lot of time on mountain bikes, have a lot of experience in uh, that field. Uh, you know, I'm passionate about it. I'm pretty much like a ride addict, kind of like how Eugene is. Um, and we hope that shows people that we just don't service and sell, but we live the lifestyle. And it's something that's, like he said, a good a passion of ours. And we hope it shows through and what we do for the customers and uh, in the shop in general. Well, I appreciate you guys having us today. appreciate all the information you gave us. It sounds like you guys have something for everybody here at Champion Cycling. Hopefully, after everything you've seen today, you'll agree there's no doubt that Eugene and his team at Champion Cycling can set you up with the perfect bike so that you can take a scenic tour of Fort Smith, giving you a front seat at all the amazing things to do and see in our city. I don't know about you, but I'm excited for the future of Fort Smith. It has so much to offer that makes it a great place to work, play, and live. Thanks for joining us today. I'm your host, Taylor Rogers, and until next time, remember to go Fort Smith.